And now, your go-to source for year-round fantasy hockey advice, DFS, and betting coverage. This is NHL Fantasy on Ice, presented by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL. Right now, there are three certainties in life, death taxes and the Winnipeg Jets winning hockey games. Brought to you by our good friends over at Skip. It's time for another episode of NHL Fantasy on Ice, Week 6 Mailbag Edition. Nick Alberga, Jay Khan with you. What's going on, Jakey? Good to be here, Nick. And yeah, if there if if anything is as good as the Winnipeg Jets right now, I have I have certainly not seen it. This team is just incredible. If you weren't a believer before, I think that uh, win against the against the New York Rangers at Madison Square Garden had to make you a believer. This episode brought to you by Skip. Skip to the good part and get to the groceries, meals, and essentials delivered right to your door on Skip. Downright incredible, Jake. The first team to win 15 of their first 16 games. Lots coming on that front. Uh, we got Tim Duncan and David Robinson coming on today's podcast Uh, Michael Leboff and Tim Kalinowski we're gonna talk some betting in a couple minutes here I don't know how producer Bobby pulled that but I me and you can just (laughs) kind of clear out of the way let these guys cook right let them do their thing uh, snap it around a little bit and yeah we're a month into this thing now and we can kind of look at some awards markets maybe some futures markets as well get a good grasp on where these teams are at maybe find some value as well love talking to both those guys Speaking of value, uh, Pete Jensen's coming up with our mailbag questions, but the Winnipeg Jets, that's where we have to start. Incredible story to start this season. There's just so many different angles with this team right now, but the big question I wanted to ask you off the top, you're voting for the Hart Trophy right now. Is it Kyle Connor or Connor Hellebuck, Jake? Oh man, I that you're making that you're making this a, a difficult selection. I might bring up Kyle Connor as well if we talk a little Rocket Richard uh, later on. I'm gonna go to Connor Hellebuck though, uh, Nick. If I'm picking one of the two Winnipeg Jets here, he's just putting up Hart Trophy caliber numbers. What you'd have to do uh, from a from the goaltending position to even be in that conversation, kind of similar to what Carey Price did all those years ago. So I think I would lean Hellebuck, but man, Kyle Connor is special. It seems like he's ready to score every single night, and I would not be surprised if he hangs around. Around, uh, in that rocket race I want to ask the boys about that a little bit later on you're right and by the way a goalie hasn't won the Hart Trophy since 14-15 I believe Carey Price walking away with those honors it is difficult to do my answer actually would be Kyle Connor 11 goals 11 assists and that's just simply because the Winnipeg Jets are scoring goals like crazy not to say they haven't needed Hellebuck but I think there's been a couple wins from Eric Comrie as well Pete Jensen's boy Capo Kakinen back in the mix there with the Winnipeg Jets as well but 73 goals Jake In 16 games, we're looking at 4.6 goals per game. To me, that's been the big story. I thought this team would have trouble scoring this season. Well, yeah, and I was going to ask you, what's impressed you most about this Winnipeg Jets team? I think Hellebuck was probably obvious coming into the year. We had him ranked as a you know top two, top three goaltender in fantasy hockey. I think the offense is really what's shocking me. And watching that entire game against the Rangers the other night, the way they're able to possess the puck in the O zone and just the confidence that they're playing with all four lines, uh, specifically those top three lines, that's what's really jumping out to me. Like, okay, this Jets team can can win the 2 one 3 one game if they get into it, but they can also win a 6-3 game against a team like the Rangers that defends relatively well and has arguably the best goaltender in the world. That That's what's impressing me the most right now, Nick. Unequivocally, it's a scoring depth, right? I think you look at that roster, there's the classic names on that roster. Mark Shifley's having a good year. We reference Kyle Connor. Um, you know, Nikolai Ehlers having his best season in years right now for the Winnipeg Jets, but it's a depth scoring. Like I saw a really good graphic on the broadcast the other night. There's like four or five or six guys who have scored at least like three goals. And when you're getting that kind of production early on in the season, you're going to win some hockey games. So I think Hellebuck's been an incredible story, but you look at some of the names on that roster, they shouldn't be this good, but they're playing as a cohesive unit. We've seen this for years now with this Jets team. We sort of joked about like, who's the two C for the Winnipeg Jets. It's Vladislav Nemestikov. Like I, I just think you look at some of the players on this roster, you think regression, but then they keep winning and winning and winning. And they're just playing like a unit right now, Jake. I think a lot of people are going to point to that position and go, really, you're doing this with Vlad Nemestikov as your second line center, but you got to give the guy some credit. He's stepped up and I mean, he has a supporting cast as well to kind of help him out. So is he that prototypical 2C that we look at and say, yeah, this is a cup winning second line center? Probably not, but maybe he's developing into that before our eyes and, and we do have to give him a little bit of props. There's so many good fantasy stories on this roster, Nick. Um, how many teams in the league can we say you could roster third line players and get consistent production from them? I don't 
don't think too many. And, and Winnipeg is, is certainly one of those teams that at some point it's going to cool off, right? It has to not to throw yeah. cold water on this. There's going to be a cold streak. So um, I, I just have to say I'm a believer in what they're doing long term. I think this team can can win uh, going into the playoffs. I want a piece of this steak, Jake. Uh, so if you're looking for odds right now in the Jets game, velardi has been on fire. Vlad Nemesnikov, Cole Perfetti. Until this team starts losing hockey games, uh, I, I'm going to dress as many Jets on my roster. I just talked about it. They're scoring goals like crazy. Uh, the one question I did have was like the Jack Adams market. If you do recall last year, Rick Bonus, who goes out pretty much on top. I know it was a tough go in the playoffs, but he's a finalist for the Jack Adams last year. Scotty Arneal's got to be the far and away front runner. I know we're almost at the 20 game mark and there's lots of hockey and racetracks still remaining in the regular season, but I'm just wondering, will it hurt his chances? Does it help his chances considering bonus was a finalist last year? Cause Arneal's done a great job in season number one behind the bench here. I think it would hurt his chances, to be honest, to have the the you know the former coach in that mix already. So really, Nick, when it comes down to it, to win that award, you have to exceed expectations. Whether those expectations are bottom of the league and you make the playoffs, or middle of the pack and you know you have a, a great top tier season, I'd say Winnipeg's expectations were above average, right? This year, probably a bubble team, you know, maybe three seed in, in their in their division. So they are exceeding expectations right now, and that is the you know the type of formula you need to get on the ballot for that award. So he still has a, a very legitimate shot. I mean, if they keep up a season like this, they win the president's trophy. It'll be hard to keep him off of it. Uh, but everyone's always looking for that sneaky underdog story, right? The team that made the playoffs that wasn't supposed to. So uh, probably not for me at the moment, just based on all those factors. And Jake, uh, the next three games coming up here for the uh, Winnipeg Jets at Tampa Thursday, and then a home and home against the Florida Panthers, man. The, probably the top two teams in hockey right now. Yeah, maybe a little Stanley Cup final preview. I don't know. I, I We always say that whenever a good East team plays a good West team. It's a little early to be looking ahead, but man, Winnipeg is, is building the case as the best team in the West, and I don't think anybody's knocked Florida off that pillar just yet with what they're doing. Um, at, yeah, at some point, this is going to go the other way for them, but it's it's hard not to root for this team, Nick, and, and like, like we've mentioned, they can beat you in the alley. They, they kind of beat you anywhere right now, the way that this team is is going, and still think there's a lot of value left in this team. I'm, I'm curious, maybe we can get into it with the boys uh, in a little bit as well. Futures markets, are we interested there? Because it still feels like the uh, the futures markets aren't taking the Jets too seriously right now. Yeah, it kind of is intriguing. And again, as you reference, uh, Tim Kalinowski and Michael Leboff are coming up uh, to break down the betting aspect of the NHL start of our approaching the 20-game mark of this season. Uh, I know we had referenced Pete Jensen's going to drop by. We're having a couple tech issues. We're going to answer your mailbag questions. We're going to start here, delivered by Skip what to do with Nachushkin coming back Friday? I wanted to get into the Colorado Avalanche conversation because I think buy time is closing, Jake. But first, your thoughts on Nachushkin making his season debut on Friday. Well, I'm fired up because I stashed him in a couple of leagues. And there obviously, there's always risk involved when you take a guy that's not playing. But he was one of my favorite stashes coming into this year because I, I really did think that the Avs were going to be desperate to bring him back. And uh, sure enough, we all saw the start of the season for Colorado. And they are playing better right now. Lekkonen's back in the lineup. But they're still desperate to get Val Nishuskin back on that team. He's an all-situations player for them, Nick. So I'm firing him up. And I, I, I mean, I have no reason to believe that he can't get back into form quickly. I'll give him a few games but um, I think if you stash found the two skin you're just you're eager you can't wait to drop someone to get him back in your lineup I, I thought it was very interesting if you recall the first five games of this season everybody and their mother was Bednar's job on the line what's wrong with Colorado yeah. they couldn't get a save and now I watched them they're an absolute wagon again and dare I say Alexander Georgiev is back in the mix uh, three straight wins he's allowed 12 goals in his past five I would still uh, tread very, very carefully, but there's no doubt this team's getting stronger, not to mention Jonathan Drouin and Miles Wood. They're trending towards returning on Friday as well as Vlad, uh, Val Nachushkin uh, making his season debut. By the way, Ross Colton out six to eight weeks, no timetable still on Landeskog, but it, it's got to be by time for this team. Like We've seen the history in recent you know seasons with this team. McKinnon's playing like a man possessed. I saw a funny tweet. He's on pace for 125 assists, so you wonder about the Hart Trophy and a repeat yeah. success for a guy like Nathan McKinnon. It is buy time on this team, Jake. That's all I can say. Well, you bring up a good point on them as, as a whole. I was actually going to get into them when we get, maybe give out some picks for the next couple of days as well. As much as everyone was singing doom and gloom about this team, you look at it, there are three studs right now, Nick. You got McKinnon, who's very much in the Hart Trophy conversation, maybe the favorite to win it right now. Makar, Norris Trophy. Miko Rantan is tied for the league 
league leading goals now with the hat trick the other night. So he's very much in the rocket conversation. So your three studs are, are actually still getting it done. Now you're getting some reinforcements. And, uh, you know, that's a scary thought, I think, for the rest of the league with the Avs uh, kind of picking things up. Another mailbag question for you, though, Central Division uh, related here, Nick. Jason Robertson, like, what are what are we doing? Do we are we full panic button on this file right now? Things are so spread out in in Dallas. Seven goal performance the other night, and he's not even a part of it. Like, are we really concerned about where this file is headed? I'm still a Robertson believer. Like, I still think it's relatively early. We haven't even reached the midway point uh, of November. Obviously, we're getting there tomorrow. But like, I I think you just look at Robertson. The body of work is extensive enough for me to be interested to think by low actually, on a, on a Jason Robertson. I think at some point in time, he's going to bust loose. He's going to have a multi-point effort. Because you look across that roster, yeah. Jake, I think you would agree, they have not played to potential yet. And I think that was uh, turbul- turbulency uh, for me a bit was expected with that Dallas Stars team. So I'm going to ride this out. And in fact, if you see uh, you know an owner out there who's looking to, to rid themselves of Jason Robertson, I'm buying right now. How about you? Yeah, and I like I could buy a little bit. Depends. I I don't think I'd be giving up yeah. too much, uh, anything significant to bring him back. And this was the reason why I wanted to avoid stars players early in the drafts, Nick, because things are so spread out. I think you could get almost similar value taking like a Duchesne or a Sagan late in your draft, right? Even a Jamie Ben, who's been not the greatest this year, but you talk about how it's it's going to come in in cold and hot patches. I don't want a guy in the first couple rounds that's going to be hot and cold, right? I'm okay with that a little bit later in the draft. So that made Robertson a, a tough selection for me no, another one uh, for you that came in here um yeah this one's a little close to, cl- uh, closer to home for you Austin Matthews injury is there is there any panic there that this could be something long term it sounds like uh, he might be coming back this weekend I think something is lingering there and we'll see what happens on Thursday or the next time the Maple Leafs practice but he hasn't skated since Sunday Jake um, I think there's a bit of concern there's something lingering there having said that there is multiple people that have reached out in the last two days alone asking me if it's a good time to buy on Austin Matthews. Anytime somebody scores 69 goals in a season, I would definitively say yes. I'm saying yes on that front. I think his value is really low right now because yeah. people like, like I mean, just as you pondered, like w- what's going on with the injury here? So I actually think it's a good time to buy. I don't know if he's going to be Austin Matthews' uh, 70 goal clip, Austin Matthews, but I think he's a guy, and we saw this a couple years ago with a bum wrist, he scored 40 still. Like I, I, I still think there's too much value not to pass up on acquiring Austin Matthews right now. Well, and I think the, the Leafs can afford the ability to keep him out as long as they need to, right? To get him back to 100%. They're not desperate where they got to force him back in. I, I feel like Edmonton did the same thing with Connor McDavid. Even though he was out for a shorter term than maybe we thought he was going to be, they're like, no, it's okay. We got dry saddle. We got some other guys. You Make sure you get healthy. You come back. And now we're seeing McDavid crank it up, right? So I think once Matthews does come back, whenever that is, if it's this weekend, if it's another week or two away, I think the Leafs are going to be patient. They've got guys that can score. Uh, they have, you know, William Nylander's tied for the league leading in goals right now. He's in the rocket conversation. So they have guys that for the time being can kind of hold down the fort. Uh, Don't be surprised when Matthews comes back if he just torches the league again. Yeah, I wouldn't be stunned. And the Leafs have three games in the next week and a half. I think they play, uh, obviously, this uh, Saturday, the game against Edmonton, then Vegas next Wednesday, then Utah on the Sunday. So maybe just patience is a virtue on the Matthews front. But we're buying. Speaking of buying, the... um, Pittsburgh Penguins reportedly selling. Uh, Kyle Dubas, mm. according to Malta reports, has made it be known that everyone but Sidney Crosby, so their only good fantasy player, <laughs> yeah. is available for trade. Are you attacking this any differently if, let's say, you own some Pittsburgh Penguins setting yourself up for a guy to be traded? I don't know who they're trading, Jake. Well, I kind of love that quote because I'm like, he's the only one anybody would have any interest in. Uh, <laughs> maybe not the only one, but he is the the guy that if I'm a team, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I want Sid, Sid over here. And I mean, Sid signed that contract. You could say, okay, he stayed loyal with the Penguins, but it is a movable deal. If, if he did actually want to entertain getting traded at some point, I know it sounds crazy. Uh, it's something that they could facilitate. But uh, I mean, in terms of players on that roster that I'd maybe be sitting sitting on thinking, okay, maybe they can land in a good spot. Ricard Raquel jumps to mind as, as somebody that's you know top six guy could be maybe a bit of a gun for hire Brian Rust I I really like it's just he has trouble staying on the ice staying healthy consistently Nick but I really like Brian Rust he likes to shoot the puck a lot if I was another team needed a top six forward he's somebody I'd be interested in but that's it kind of stops there there's not too many other guys on that Penguins roster uh you know that aren't well over the age of 30 right now 
Yeah, I'm not really interested, I'll be honest. Bunting, Raquel, uh, Rust, um, I don't know how they're going to trade Latang. How are you trading Evgeny Malkin? Like, these guys, it's the full green light special for them. Like, if they don't want to leave, they ain't leaving. And I guess if they give them the green light to do something, they can try their best. But I don't know who's taking these guys right now. It's an absolute mess, man, in Pittsburgh. Uh, I want to talk a bit about Buffalo. Uh, Tate Thompson injured. Um, um, so is UPL. So I think talk about replacement options. And these guys are day-to-day right now. But... Up front, Ryan McLeod, Dylan Cousins, two guys I would look at uh, to replace that massive hole left behind by Tage Thompson. Um, some other guys that have that eligibility, Gabe Velarde, Connor McMichael, Bo Horvat, excuse me. When it comes to the crease, we can lump this into the Kochekov and Kemper conversation, but Jonathan Quick, Kevin Lankin, and Joey Decord, Logan Thompson. Um, Buffalo, man, we talked about them last podcast, and then they come out like three hours later and just blow one big time against the Montreal Canadiens. I know, and they're pretty big favorites on Thursday against the St. Louis Blues, Nick. I don't know, anytime I see that kind of number beside the Sabres, I'm thinking this could be a full fade and let the Sabres prove me wrong. They're a weird team, though. They could step up. Like, we saw them. uh, Producer Bobby was on it last week when they you know, went into MSG and just pounded the Rangers. So uh, it is a strange team. Unfortunate to see Tage get hurt, though, because he was really starting to cook, man. It, he yeah. was scoring every single game. Hopefully it's just something short-term for him. Even UPL, despite the fact that that was a bad game against Montreal, his few starts before that were excellent. So he had been playing some pretty good hockey. I wanted to throw Georgiev at you here quickly while we're on goaltending. Uh, Nick, we got a couple questions about him. Is he back? Can we trust him now? Or is this just, okay, you know, at some point he was going to win a couple of games. It's not like he's he's putting up sparkling numbers here but he is starting to settle into the season a little bit I would tread very carefully I would probably buy but a sprinkle of you know this guy can implode in your face Um, even watching the game against Los Angeles on uh, Wednesday night he didn't face a shot for like a period and a half that's going to happen because Colorado's an absolute wagon so I would tread carefully but I think if you're looking for let's say like a third goalie I would buy um, I still think fantasy owners would have to be motivated to trade Georgiev. Like the sample size is relatively small. However, I did mention he surrendered 12 goals in the past five outings. So I'd be careful with it. But again, if I'm looking to solidify my crease, which is funny to say as like a third string goalie, okay, give me Georgiev, Jake. There should be a punishment for that, by the way. If you can't record a <laughs> shot in a whole period, like maybe you yeah. lose a fifth a fifth round draft pick or a fine or something like that. The King, you were right, man. The Kings didn't get a shot. Or they, I think they were sitting on one shot for almost a period and a half after the first period. So not a lot of work for Georgiev, but I do like that he's kind of maybe finding his confidence a little bit. Teams playing much better defense in front of him, which I think is going to help. So uh, if you hung on to him through that really rough stretch, I mean, and it was really really rough. I think I think it is going to pay off because I think the abs are going to win a lot of games here down the stretch and uh, he'll be an effective fantasy asset still we talked about the two banged up goaltenders from Wednesday night Kochekov and obviously Darcy Kemper of the guys who are coming in whether it's Spencer Martin or David Riddick who do you prefer Jake Oh boy, these are <laughs> these are tough <laughs> options here. I think I'm gonna go to David Riddick out, out of the two. I again, not a guy that I I trust a lot, but I think the team in front of him can play relatively well, can lock it down, can create a, a half decent environment for him. So I mean, there's a lot of goaltenders around the league that I I don't trust right now. I know you're not on uh, old Pyotr Kachekov and what oh. he did as well. Are you? You're just completely off that file in Carolina, eh? Jake, these goalies, man, like he, he was hinting at something, then he lets like two more in, and then he just like skates off. Like, I, I don't know. I'm just so over it. I've owned Kochekov for multiple years. I guess there's a reason why Carolina hasn't firmly believed in this guy. Then they got Anderson, can't stay healthy either. I'm concerned in, the, in that state. I love Carolina this year, man. They're playing really, really well. But ultimately, that's been the undoing for this team. They can't score on the power play. They can't score in general in the playoffs. And the goaltending has been MIA when it matters most. And that that would scare me if I'm a Canes fan. Well, I got burned in that game too, Nick. The Canes went nine games in a row scoring four goals. So I'm thinking, well, Canes team total over three and a half is like free money here against Utah who can't defend and sure enough they only score one goal and we get a big goaltending performance 50 saves so uh, that's how things uh, tend to work sometimes but it's what you said I, I love a lot of what Carolina is doing despite the fact that they only got one against Utah they were doing all the all the the same things I, I mean Jackson Blake's a guy I think we should continue to keep an eye on great spot in that lineup Jack Roslevic as well I think he finished with five shots on goal in that game playing up on the top line so uh, from an offensive standpoint standpoint still a lot of value in Carolina just uh, maybe uh, maybe avoid the goaltenders if you can clearly you missed my call on Monday's podcast under Utah Carolina under under 
We nailed that, Jake. <laughs> you did nail that. You could well. You, I mean, Carolina probably should have scored a few goals in that. But hey, shoulda, coulda, woulda. You you yeah. you get your under, even though it was looking a, looking a little hairy there for a little bit in the third period. It's uh, it only matters uh, the final result. Okay, earlier on, I referenced Tim Duncan and David Robinson. Let's bring them in now. It's uh, Michael Leboff and Tim Kalinowski for our weekly betting segment. Guys, we got to start with the Winnipeg Jets. Leboff, we'll start with you, then over to Tim. Most books still don't even have the Winnipeg Jets in their top 10 to win the Stanley Cup. Mike, this team's 15-1-0 and in the first 16 games. What gives on that front? Yeah, I I, I think it's um it's been a fun storyline to watch. And, and I know I hear Jake here talk about it a lot on with Boomer on, on Sirius that – that they just don't get the respect um, that they have earned from sports books and betters, and I think there's a couple things. One, it's it's a market situation, right? Winnipeg is just not a massive market, so th- there's probably all not all that much um, liability built into like their price from preseason. Not a lot of people were betting this team to do anything uh, coming into the year, so I think that's part of it. So book books are happy to still take on the money, and I think they're also taking a stance here, which is. Yeah, it's been it's been a great story, but we're we're not buying it, even though they're off to the best start in NHL history. I, I still think that they're a good value bet game to game. Like they're a pick them on the road in Tampa. They were a slight dog against the Rangers. They don't look. There's nothing when I watch them that I'm saying, oh man, this is fluky. They just look like a determined bunch. They're playing a a good game, and of course they've got a great goalie. So, uh, yeah, I think on a game to game basis, like you could still, which is crazy, like because in in other sports this would not be happening. You could still get a good price on what is the best team uh, in the league this season. I mean, on my end, I'll just say this: we've seen this with Winnipeg before. I mean, not not to I guess this extent, but I think a lot of people still feel like we got to see it to believe it in the playoffs. You know, they've they've passed every test in the regular season again, time and time again. And even because of their their division and what they're going to have to go through, you know, in the playoffs, I still think that you know I know it's a long way away, but you're going to get good value probably still betting Winnipeg in the playoffs if you wait, you know, if we wait that long. And I think that. You know, they're just – I'm a fan of them because I like the way they do it, but I still think we got to take a step back here and be like, look, they're not the Golden State Warriors of 2016, whatever it was. There, there's still going to be opportunities to fade them, and my idiot brain is is planning on fading them in the next couple of games here. They, they do have a little tough tough stretch here with the Florida teams. Tim is right about the path, too. When we do actually get to the playoffs, which is a long ways away, you get Dallas there. Colorado, we assume, is improved, is going to be a part of that. Heck, maybe Minnesota wants to stick around. That central division is, is really difficult. I wanted to get your guys' take on, on some individual players in – in Winnipeg, Kyle Connor specifically. I mean, this guy scores, it feels like, every single game. Would you be willing to back him in the rocket race or, or something like that? I know Nick mentioned Scott Arneal, Jack Adams. Is there any individual aspects here we can look to? Mike, uh, we could start with you on this one. Yeah, my, my favorite bet is, is Hellebuck is still out there 30 to 1 to win the heart. I think that's a really good bet right now. Like, he's going to be, if, if Winnipeg wins the President's Trophy or they get to, a, you know, 110 points. He's going to be the the main driver, and and we're getting great performances from from Kyle Connor and and Shifley and and like the rest of the bunch. But everybody knows that this team who who's driving the bus on this team, and it's Connor Hellebuck. So if he can propel this team to um, the heights that they're on pace for, he should be in this conversation. And it's wide open, uh, which is not what we really expected. Usually, it's it feels like it's going to be one of the big dogs, and it's or and um, maybe like you get a Kucherov or Kaprizov in there. Um, but this. Because of the starts that a few of the um, the favorites coming into the season have had, the door is open for a story like Hellebuck. So I think he's the Vezina favorite right now. I'd much rather play the the number at like ten times the price on the heart because I do think if they do something here, um, he's going to be worth a mention. And and the prices have just come down everywhere else. Like Arneal's now the favorite to win the Jack Adams, rightfully so. Um, I. I, the one thing about Connor and backing him to win the Rocket is, do we think that the power play is going to cook at 44% or whatever it's cooking at right now for the rest of the season? I would say no. Um, but um, So I, I'd much rather bet Hellebuck. And, I, and I, I'm, I'm a, such a sucker for betting goalies in the Hart Trophy market, so I like to make my donations through that way and i um, probably going to do it again. Yeah, I, I, for me, I look at, you know, kind of 10-game segments, right? Is there a, like, why do I want to, buy more Winnipeg right now in the last 10 games look how good they've been what do we think in the next 10 games like could they possibly exceed that probably not so uh, I think you could kind of take your ice uh, take your ice and buy a little time there uh, if you want it because there could be could be a mini dip we go back up I mean just a reminder I bet Florida to win the cup 22 to 1 you know last January so there's there's still opportunities if you stay patient 
Fair enough. Uh, there's a lot of really good stories, but uh, the biggest has to be, of course, the Winnipeg Jets. They're 15 1 0 in the first 16 games of the season. It's incredible. Boys, uh, Timmy, we could start with you here. Uh, just any specific plays that you've liked as of late in terms of uh, trends, themes early on in the season? I can't believe we're about the uh, to hit the, the quarter pole of the campaign. Well, I got to give credit to, you know, our third wheel, Nick Martin. Uh, he was he was bang on it before the season started and that he was not going to be high on the Nashville Predators. And, you know, he's obviously been right about that. This is a Nashville team. I feel like we keep waiting for it to get right. Uh, and it just hasn't happened. So, you know, I also say Nashville hasn't won a game as a dog. They're 0-5 as a dog. So, um, you know, you could you could keep continuing to fade. Nashville, that's a team that I have my eye on. And and this Pittsburgh team is just the the variance of games that they play. Um, I, I'm continuing to enjoy fading them, but they're going to play a uh, Columbus team that's lost six in a row themselves. So that could be a hold your nose uh, as well. So those are two teams I think have really kind of stuck out to me. So I, I go the negative route, Nick. That, that's kind of who I am. Yeah, for me, it's it's I'm I have my eye on a couple of the teams that are off to either poor or mediocre starts that I think can um, are trending in the right direction. Ottawa, in my mind, I think Ottawa has a chance to snap into something here, and and snap, and usually when we talk about Ottawa Senators and snapping into something, it's either an opponent or a, or a losing streak. But this time, I think it's it's actually going to be a, a winning streak. Like I think Ottawa is showing signs that they're about to get hot. And as long as Linus Olmark and, and Anton Forsberg can um, play up to par, I think this team has really started to show some actual legitimate signs. And it's not just us saying, like, they're they're too good to be doing this, they're too good to be doing this. It's No, they're actually showing it now. So I think Ottawa is going to be a bet-on team here, and I, I don't mind betting them um, in future markets too because I, I think we could be talking, you know, and Tim's talking about, like, 10-game samples – over the next 10 games being like this team is now in the mix with the Torontos, um, the Bruins and like the fight for second or third in, in the Atlantic and maybe can be nipping at the heels of, of Florida too. So they're one team uh, in that like mushy middle that I'm looking at uh, another team w- much further down the board. Um, it's I, I, maybe I'm crazy, but I don't think it's been as bad for the Sharks as it was in the beginning of the season like they're starting to play a little bit better and I think that's all you're going to be asking of this team is like to show like one step forward um now and then and um they're a huge underdog against the Rangers tonight and and I think the Rangers are a little bit of a paper tiger at the current moment so if you're getting better than three to one like I don't hate a bet on on San Jose uh at these kind of huge prices especially with Celebrini back I was gonna I was gonna say Leboff I know you love a frisky dog and I feel I do feel like the dogs are a little more frisky this year right the the Sharks I maybe the Ducks I I don't know maybe the Blackhawks they at least seem more competitive like they're not gonna get rinsed by four or five goals every single night but one thing I've noticed guys and I'd be curious both your takes on this it does feel like we've had a lot of blowouts this year. I don't know if it's going to continue, but a lot of games ending three, four, five goals. Do we start to play sprinkle a little puck line on some of these teams, even for the underdogs, knowing, man, when it gets away from teams, it feels like it really gets away. Leboff, have you have you noticed that a little bit? Yeah, we're we're big fans of the reverse puck, reverse puck lines, yeah. um, Tim and Tim and myself. So yeah, I don't think it's a bad idea at all, and and it's not just the the fact that I think teams are much more open to taking their foot off the pedal like like tennis players are like selling a set like when they're like I'm just you know I'm, I'm getting blown out here I'm just going to take take it off and, and try to get it back next time um but I also think it's the goalie pull situation too like coaches are pulling earlier and earlier so the the puck lines are open if the sharks are up you know I know they just won one nothing against the devils but if they're you know they they have a, a one goal lead against the rangers with three minutes left laviolette pulls it like you'd, you'd be thrilled to be holding that ticket um at that situation so I I'm with you there. I think it's it's definitely something to consider and something to dig into um, in the numbers as well. Can I just say one thing? When Lebov says we're both fans of the reverse puck line, what he means is he indoctrinated me to being a fan of the reverse <laughs> puck line. And you have him on uh, to say that he thinks the Rangers are a paper tiger, um, you know, press play over the last three years with Lebov, and that he's interested in betting the Sharks. So, I, you know, I, I could have told you, I could have spoken for both of us here. It could have been like a ventriloquist. Well, that's why I'm in this gigantic mansion, beachfront <laughs> property. <laughs> Boys, just to wrap, uh, any bets you like specifically this weekend, Timmy? We can start with you, buddy. Uh, yes, um, I'm looking at the Montreal Minnesota under six and a half. Uh, Minnesota, you, be, you know, they're a team that's had a great shooting percentage all year long, uh, not quite generating as much as the advanced numbers say for you know what their record shows. So I'm going to go the under in that one. Yeah, I like the Blackhawks tonight. Um, I think that they're just as 
Jake was saying, like the, the gap between the middle of the pack teams and the bottom feeders is just so much shorter than it was over the past three seasons. So I don't think that they're that much worse than the Kraken. I think that they've got the upside. It's on the road. Um, I get that. But I think um, Chicago's a, a good um, team to back here on, on Thursday night. Uh, they're a team I'll, I'll watch. And uh, the, set, the price is a little steep on the Senators against the Flyers, but that game on Saturday against the Hurricanes, I'm going to be on the Senators in that one. I think you'll get a, a decent price. It'll be a pretty tricky schedule spot for Carolina. And I just really want to be a part of the Senators' run, which I feel is coming. So uh, I'm going to be backing the Senators over the weekend in, in Raleigh. I like that. Um, I know we've said this before, but I think the Sens are for real watching that team quite a bit this season. I like the way they play. I like what Travis Green is bringing to the table. I always like what you guys bring to the table. Appreciate your time today. Always a pleasure, boys. You got it. Thank you once again to Michael Leboff and Tim Kalinowski. Jake, though, let's get some picks. I like that they brought up Montreal and Minnesota because I'm playing Minnesota in regulation. If you go to Wikipedia, you search Montreal. They're actually owned by the Minnesota Wild. The Wild have won seven straight, and I'm anticipating Mark andre Fleury, who's in his retirement season. He owns the Habs, so I got Minnesota tonight. I got to give you some props. You've been uh, quietly hot with the picks here, uh, Nick. So I I think I should probably try to ride this heater and jump on that one with you. And uh, anytime Tim gives out a pick, I'm interested. So maybe maybe both of those in that game. I mentioned it earlier. St. Louis, a, a healthy dog against Buffalo. The Blues could be completely garbage, but they could also be competitive. I think they've lost two different games 8-1 this year. So that's always on the table when St. Louis plays, Nick. But uh, whenever the Sabres are that big of a favorite, question marks about goaltending Tage Thompson. I, I got some interest in the Blues on Thursday night. I like it. I don't do any bets involving Buffalo anymore. A couple other things I'm looking at. I like the under again, St. Louis Boston on Saturday. And don't forget the Logan Thompson revenge game returning to Vegas on Sunday. Give me the Capitals money line, Jake. How about that? Well, speaking of the Capitals, Friday night in Colorado. We've touched on Colorado a couple times throughout the course of this episode. I'm looking to back the Avs here. I think they're starting to get it me into too. gear. Lekkonen's back. Nichuskin comes back on Friday. So maybe we maybe do some some big Val props uh, in his return. But Colorado money line, I think I'm going to be back in the Avs a lot the next few weeks. I'm playing uh, Avs three-way in that game in regulation. I like them quite a bit. So still coming up, uh, Week 7 Waiver Wire Edition on Monday. Many thanks to uh, Tim Kalinowski and Michael Leboff. Also, don't forget to check out NHL Induction Class, hosted by Kenny Albert. Sits down with all the inductees from this past Hall of Fame ca- class of 2024, Jeremy Roenick, Shea Weber, Natalie Darwitz, David Poyle, and others, Bobby. And before we wrap, we have to thank Peter Jensen, who, you know, behind the scenes, putting together the listener questions. He had some tech issues today in those New York City offices. I told him, don't go into the office. Stay at home. You go into that office and bad things happen. I'm telling you right now. So, Peter, thank you. And uh, we'll get you back on the horn next week. Put a bow on it, Nick. Sounds good. Thank you to producer Bobby Bender for J-Con. I'm Nick Alberga. You've been listening to NHL Fantasy on Ice. Delivered by Skip. Skip to the good part and get groceries, meals, and essentials delivered right to your door on Skip. Skip.